Hey, Spuddies, Potato Whiskey here, and welcome to Civilization VI. We're doing another disaster game. This time we're playing as Spain. If there's a lot of popular demand and people really want me to finish this save file, if the video really pops off, I will finish it. This one has been sent in by friend of the channel, Raydeen Fuentes. Hello, Potato. I've been watching your videos for a while. You were the main reason I started playing this game. I have a save file where I started the game in Spain, but I'm feeling stuck and far behind the AI. I don't know what to do. I was hoping you could look over it. At least give me some tips. I have no mods aside quick deals and better tax, and I'm on a standard game speed. And already I can see some problems here. So this is a very, very old version of the game with a lot of things missing. One of my recommendations to anybody playing Civilization, keep an eye out for the sales on the anthology pack. Go ahead and get the full pack on Steam would be my recommendation. It really does significantly improve how the game plays, the level of strategies and fun that you have available to you. Currently 257 turns into the game and it looks like you started off in Madrid. This is your capital. Let's see, Inquisitors can remove heresy, religious, combat religions have a bonus following against other religions. You can form fleets and armadas, trade routes, get bonus stuff, multiple continents. Okay, so you still have the continent stuff. You have the conquistador, the mission. The current phase of the game is roughly speaking in the industrial era, while Germany is up here in the atomic era, taking a stock of the situation. Yeah, really, this comes down to one very simple thing. You're playing too conservatively. You are not making enough cities. So for example, you could have gotten another city over here. You have not explored very well. So what have you built here in your capital? You have, you have some good stuff here, right? You've got your monument, you've got your granary, you've got your water mill. Love to see all that. Probably don't need the medieval walls unless you're going for a tourism victory. I love that you have a campus. You have an enca encampment as well. Also a theater square, industrial zone, commercial hub. All those all those are actually great things to pick up. The Forbidden City is a fantastic wonder as well. But if I take a look at this city, look at this tile right here. It's, it's a sheep tile and you are working it, but it is unimproved. This hill tile, you're working it, but it's unimproved. This woods tile, you're working it, but it's unapproved, unapproved, unapproved. So let me just take stock of, of, of the tiles that the city is working. If we look here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tiles that you could have improved with builders. That means you need more builders. And if you're building builders, you got to unlock your government and you got to plug in serfdom. It's going to be way better than caravanseries for you, I promise. I'm not even going to look at all this other stuff that you're doing. Builders, 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 builders. Let's take a look at Seville. Oh, you're working campus specialist slots this could this can catch you out if you don't improve your tiles look 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 at the tiles here this is the only tile right here that's actually improved you've got two of your citizens sitting in here generating four signs for you but they could be working a one food one production they could be working one food one production right like this science is not good so one thing that i recommend to a lot of players is i say click this and this this will tell your citizens to focus on food and production, so your cities will build faster. You'll have less science and stuff like that, but the food and production will allow you to build buildings faster. So big recommendation. Like, I'm not sure why you're building walls. Let's have a look here. Ah, you are playing monarchy, which is nice, but that's not important to us right now. What's important to us right now is we get you builders to improve your empire. So we're going to pop that down there. Now, it also looks like you didn't get a religion this game. When you're playing Spain, getting a religion is actually quite important. This university is fantastic. Love the idea of getting a university. It's the wrong time. We need builders. Same sort of thing. We come in here. You've got all these tiles that are unimproved. So I'm going to go through and just say like, okay, we got a farm here and it's it's totally fine to make little farm triangles. If you see a good location for farm triangles in the early to mid game, go for it, dude. It's actually fine. I want this repaired, which means I probably want to get a galley too at some point. So, you know, we'll have to, we'll have to figure that out. Let's have a look at the Valal. I don't really fully understand the industrial zone in here. What is the purpose of this industrial zone? What purpose does this industrial zone serve? Why are you building this? Were you going to go for the Venetian arsenal? If so, you are better off, in my opinion, building a harbor first because the harbor has some really key things and more importantly to build the Venetian ar arsenal you're going to need production and the shipyard gives you production see here bonus production equal to the adjacency bonus of the district and bonus production oh they don't th that must be added in later so go for your harbor first before you get the industrial zone so Harbor up to shipyard, then industrial zone, then go for the Venetian arsenal in my in my mind. And then the other really, really important thing is you need to get your gosh darn builders first. It's way, 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 way more important. Okay, taking a look at this city as well. And it's more of the same, right? It's a little less compared to your other cities. And this city really needs food. 
let's have a look here. Well, let's go ahead and queue up a builder and see if we can't maybe plan a little bit of food for this city. And I think a farm right here seems good. And then if we're putting a farm there, we may as well put two extra farms adjacent so that we can get a farm triangle and make everything um, just work that a little bit better. In fact, let's let's make a farm diamond in between these two cities so they have extra food. Because this, this is plains. I, when you're on plains, i.e. kind of that brownishy colored land like this, I do recommend builders at a higher level. And like more commonly, I will recommend builders. So that's, this is my opinion is you simply just haven't built enough cities, enough builders. So let's get started by building you builders and kind of improving your empire. So I want to take a snapshot here of your empire. I'm going to go here so that we can compare. Let me just go ahead and paste that into paint real quick. I promise you just by building builders, I can completely revolutionize your empire. So let's take a quick snapshot of Madrid and a quick snapshot of Seville, quick snapshot of Valencia. I disagree with settling Valencia here. It should have been one tile to the left in my opinion. Valladolid, we'll take a snapshot there. And Kostromskaya, we will take a snapshot there. Okay, so we got our first five charge builder in the capital. I'm going to send him down here to do these chops because it's always worth it, in my opinion, to chop tiles. Always be chopping. A, B, C. Always be chopping. I'll queue up another builder in the capital. I'm going to chop out a settler because I want to place a settler down here somewhere. And I do believe this stone tile is pretty reasonable, although I may actually settle on this plains hill because I think that just works better. I get access to an extra stone chop. You also didn't collect this tribal village that's right there. Easy to miss, easy to miss. If you do miss those kind of things, really good to do is to just have this tribal village search. You click this little map search button right here, type in tribal village, you click search, you zoom out, and you can see actually all the tribal villages on the map. It's fantastic. So I'm gonna chop out that settler, but I'm gonna switch back to the builder after next turn. So there's medieval fairs. Let's change our government around slightly. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in colonization. Inspiration is not very useful. Conscription is not very useful. Discipline Discipline is okay. Trade Confederation is fine. I would go as far as to say a serfdom is like one of the most important cards in the entire game and you need to get used to using it. Charismatic Leader is actually perfectly acceptable here in this circumstance because you're playing monarchy and monarchy is good at influence. So this is fine. Meritocracy in the base game is one of the most powerful cards and like serfdom should be permanently plugged into your government. It's a super overpowered card. Retainers is one of the most overpowered cards in the game. You should always have it plugged into your cities when you have um, units. Urban planning is extremely useful if you're building builders or like getting your empire off the ground. And then finally, we can plug back in discipline just to make fighting barbarians a little bit easier. I'm gonna send some units to the north to become garrisons. We'll finish that settler nice and quick. Now we could build a mission. Now, what is the purpose of the mission when you're playing Spain? It gives you plus two faith, an extra science once you have cultural heritage. It gives you an extra two faith, one production and one food if it's on a continent different to your capital. Now, if we press two on our keyboard, we can see that this green area is our continent and this, ye this kind of whitish yellow area is another continent. So we could build missions over here pretty effectively but we don't want to build them on this continent because they're just not as good so it'd be nice to get some if we could even get some settlers out here now i don't know can the mission be built on desert yeah it absolutely can so we could even make a pretty decent desert city here let's drop the mine and now we've taken this tile from being pretty low production to being a high productivity tile and it only took a few actions we have diplomatic service so we can get an extra spy that'll be sort of i'll add that to the queue of the capital but it's not going to be something we get immediately and um, if you're wondering the espionage screen is over here it's this top right area you can see the eyeball and it'll tell you how many operatives you have it is important to get those operatives online a soon as possible we just entered into the industrial era and we've unlocked scientific theory and then we get plus one food from our plantations x would love to build the oxford university i don't know if it's going to happen today what's our next tech what's our win condition well i would say like as spain your win condition can probably be many many things but we don't actually have a win condition we've picked yet but if i press nine it seems like you've been going in a scientific direction you've got like campuses you've got industrial zones you've got commercial hubs this all points in a science direction so i'm, I'm going to kind of follow your lead here and head in a science direction which me means to me i would like to get industrialization because it would be nice to get factories and coal and the plus one production from mines because that would lead us to having more production which means we can build more stuff more quickly so like the really the thing that i really hope is that as i continue to do these disaster save file things there will be a day that I load up a save file and I don't need to tell the person to make more builders. That is one of my hopes. I'm going to go ahead and chop out another settler. And the reason that I'm chopping out the settler is because I have this 50% production boost towards settlers, which means when I chop here, this 106 production is being turned into 159 production. And so I'm finishing those settlers in a single turn, essentially. I'll go ahead and improve that tile. Since you'd already placed a farm here, I'm just going to put a bunch of farms in here. Plus it allows us to grow the city. It's all, it's all totally fine. Now looking at Seville, we're going to go ahead and look to get 
get some improvements going. So we've built a farm there, which is nice. For some reason, my, my map tax mod isn't working. I don't know if we need a second builder in here. We can instead work on infrastructure, but an extra builder isn't the worst thing in the world. The more builders we have, the better. We've got a builder in here as well. I'm going to finish those medieval walls because they are quite nice for the housing. I kind of miss this bonus influence mechanic where the longer you were in a government, like the better the bonuses got. It's pretty cool. I'm a big fan of it. I like it. All right. So I think I will chop out a builder. That's just how powerful builders are. Like using a builder charge to chop out an extra builder is like a super acceleration of your empire. It's hard for me to explain truly how good that is. Also, this city of Pokrovka is extremely vulnerable to conquest and it has a really nice wonder that we could easily yoink off this civilization. And we don't even need to worry about loyalty. So always consider conquest as part of your strategy. Let's go ahead and start getting the farms over here in Valencia. Now the city might not immediately choose to work these farms, but at the very least it does start pushing the city in a food direction. Get another builder out and we'll go ahead and plop that farm right there. And the city will choose to work that farm. Go ahead and finish those medieval walls. And the reason we build farms is because if you look at this tile right here, every citizen that works a tile eats two food. So if I were to work this tile, I would gain one food and one production and lose two food. So I would basically be trading one of my city's food for one of my, for one production. If I put a farm on this, I don't lose any food and I'm just profiting production. So farms are quite useful on flatland. I do think lumber mills are better, but farms are not terrible. Now, looking at the city of Valencia, I would have loved that the city was one tile to the left. I do think harbors are really, really good. But in this particular situation, because of the way that Valencia is, things like the university giving housing and encampments giving housing is actually quite a bit better. So we are going to go ahead and focus on the university here. I think that was actually a pretty reasonable choice by you. I'll pop a little farm in here as well. And so now Seville has two really high food tiles and will have more soon if I buy this tile, but I place a builder on there. Also, we could theoretically, we can buy builders and settlers to accelerate the rate that we do this. But yeah, it would be awesome to settle right there. I'm going to work on it. And in fact, it might be worth it for me to purchase a settler up here and send him down there. I'll put a mine right there. And now this, what was a, a two food, one production tile, right? So profit of one production because it uses two food is now a profit of three production. This tile is three times better than this tile. Just in terms of profitability. That's really, really important. Improve your tiles, kids. Settle more cities, improve more tiles. That should be the mantra of anybody wanting to learn how to play Civ. Oh, let's put a farm right here. And now something really important is about to happen when I place this next farm. So you look at this farm. It should be two food, one production, but because it has two other farms adjacent to it, and we have researched the feudalism civic, which gives farms plus one food for every two adjacent farms, this farm is twice as good as this farm. This farm, you have a profit rate of one production. This farm, you have a profit rate of one food and one production. So building farms in a cluster like this makes all of your farms more efficient in a very, very big way. Three food, one production is now a very, very nice tile. In my opinion, you should be improving grassland hills before you improve plains hills because two food, three production is better than one food, four production. And because two food allows you to pay for working the tile, right? There's a price to working every tile in the game and that price is food. So tiles with a baseline of two food, I have a preference for. It's not necessary. But now we're working three really high food tiles in this city. We have a huge food surplus. If we go here, if we click on the city details, we head to citizen growth. You can see here our total food surplus is 12. And so we're growing extremely fast in here, which will mean we can work more tiles. And if we improve those tiles, we're working improved tiles. So you can kind of see how this all snowballs together. Like we've got a seven food wheat tile here, which is just crazy. So taking a look at Valencia, it would be nice if I could improve this plantation as well. I don't think it's worth it to build many more farms in here at the moment. I think I would rather chop. So I'll go ahead and do that chop. Remember, you don't have to use the builder in the city you built it. Okay, that is just the acquisition process. You, you could use the builder wherever you need a builder. But don't be afraid to buy tiles, especially if it's a farming tile that's going to make all the adjacent tiles better. Quite an important concept. So now our capital is growing super fast, right? It's a surplus of 15 food. It's working really high food tiles. I'm going to pop you over there. You cross the river. I'll buy a Another settler to send. This city will regrow. We're going to settle this city. We got Cadiz now. Cadiz nuts. We will place the harbor right there. And the reason we're going to place it here and not here is because this has a land adjacency, which means we can use it for district adjacency because the district that we place here will be adjacent to both the harbor and the city center, thus getting a plus one adjacency bonus, which is really nice. Coastal cities that ha don't have access to fresh water, i.e. have three housing, should always build the granary first so that they can work more tiles. And then you should send builders from other cities to help them out. I'm going to chop here to finish the spy and then move my builder across the road. And then guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to make more builders. That's right. We need so many builder charges to improve our land. My advice is generally you should always be looking to steal money from the AI 
because effectively what you're stealing is production. Production you have direct control over and allows you to execute incredibly powerful moments in your build. Also, don't save your money, spend your money. Build that plantation. So I'm gonna send this builder over to help out Cadiz because there's lots of tiles here that we could clean up. Like for example, these three tiles can be cut. We could put a pasture here, Kostromskaya. I will buy another settler. Chop here, finish that university instantly. Then I think encampment is the right goal. This could be a farm triangle in here, but it sucks, but it is what it is. So I'll put the encampment over here. And why are we going for the encampment? It's because the encampment has buildings that give housing and it provides us with a way to not only get great generals, but also produce military faster with the assistance of some of these city-states. If indeed we do find militaristic city-states, we'll pop a farm here. All these farms get improved. Now Madrid has an insane food surplus of 19, which means its growth acceleration has increased quite a lot. So I'm going to sneak a little city in here. Why am I sneaking a city in here? Because it's free land. Why wouldn't I put a city here if I can? I will. Simple. One, two, three. And then I could put a city on this little coastal tile. One, two, three. And then I could put a city around this desert area. But I think I'll make use of the lake. And then one, two, three. There's some fresh water right here. So I'll go ahead and grab it. So I've got four potential city locations here that I can make great use of to improve the size and quality of my empire. Now these cities are not very good, but we're playing Spain. Spain gets special benefits for having cities not on our original capital continent, right? We get 25% production. We get a free builder. We get better missions. So settling like this is part of Spain's strategy. You need to play to the strengths of your civ. It's, it's important that we use the civilization bonuses that are given to us to achieve our aims. And Spain's bonuses are very general. They give you free builders. And builders are one of the most powerful things in the entire game. I've just spent the last 30 minutes talking about why you should make more of them. So we fix the fish over here. We really need the harbor. I'll finish the medieval walls, but I'll get started on the harbor. There's a plus four harbor right here, which feels really nice to me. So I'll go ahead and place that to lock in its price. So there's cartography. This will give us plus two gold from our fishing boats, which will give us a decent amount of cash per turn. You need to look at these quests. Natural history, industrial zone, great merchant, trade route, great merchant, harbor, the enlightenment, trade route, trade route, trade route, holy site. Would love a holy site. All right, let's research square rigging and industrialization because we want that plus one production from mines. Remember, if this mine, right, if this mine is three times better than this plain grassland hills, like the right with unimproved, if we get another plus one production to that mine, it's now four times better. And you can have many of them in a single city. It's so good. It's so good. Please improve your tiles. Improve your tiles and research the text that make your tile improvements better. It is the fundamental thing that will make you a better player. When you're trading, try to trade with people who are doing well. So like sell my wine to the player who is not doing so good. Try to buy their luxuries for a small amount of gold. Remember, high luxuries is good. If we look at the city of Madrid, for example, it has a 5% amenity boost, right? That's not bad. Chop here, that'll get us closer to the harbor. Chopping is so important. It's hard to fully explain how important chopping is, but basically imagine if you could press a button and make your city have like 10 turns in one go. Of course you press that button. Well, you should be chopping. It's so powerful. We got another builder in the capital. So let's go ahead and get that pasture online. I'm going to trade this pasture to Cadiz because this city is struggling and the relative amount of production and food that this provides to Cadiz is a lot higher than for Madrid. So now we can start to think about do we want to go to war with anybody? And I do think it would be nice to grab Pokrovka. Scythia is not doing that hot when it comes to science. In fact, she's quite a bit behind me technologically. She's three techs behind me and half my science, which means I have a pretty strong advantage if I go to war with her. Our conquistadors have a melee strength of 58. And if we use those in conjunction with a siege tower, we could take the city pretty easily. So I'm going to go ahead and build a siege tower and three conquistadors to potentially take Pokrovka. I'm also going to switch to building a harbor in here and then chop because that'll bring the harbor down to 13 turns. Chopping is your friend, not your enemy. In areas where I can't get at least three farms adjacent to each other, I'm just not going to put farms there. I'll just move on and I'll wait until I have uh, conservation, which allows me to plant woods. And then I can just put lumber mills in and around here or districts. Really great tip, by the way, use your chops to chop out the districts. It can be a really, really, really great way to speed up your district construction. I'm going to take suzerainty of Zanzibar because it has two special luxury resources that give six amenities each, which is two amenities per city if you have six cities, which is very, very powerful. Now we're at a 10% amenity bonus in our capital, which basically means every 10 turns, we take an extra turn just to put that in perspective which is really powerful getting the fishing boats online in Valladolid it might not sound like oh wow fishing
fishing boats, who cares? But these give plus one food and plus two gold that allows the city to grow. It'll generate a little bit of passive science. It'll be able to place its district. And then once you can actually get production into the city or actually finish a district, you could spend gold, the gold that it has been passively generating from these fishing tiles to make it better. Embrace your cities and, and, and what they are and just learn to make them as good as you can. Don't be afraid of your cities. Don't be afraid of making more of them. The exact civics and stuff that we research aren't nearly as important as anything else, but we did just get a builder for free. And now we can just create this iron tile, right? Boom. And now we can build a harbor. And so this city will be a relatively decent boat production warehouse. You know what I mean? We go granary first so the city can grow population. If I do a quick comparison to some of the pictures I took earlier, right? I, I have them off screen. I'm not going to show them to you, but you can go back to the video and, and, and sort of analyze them yourself. Like if I look at the starting layer, I was making a 73 science, 39.3 culture, 22 faith at 96 gold. Oh, I may have accidentally gave Saladin the majority of my money because I misread a, a trade deal. No big deal. Doesn't matter. Not particularly important. We don't need gold. If I look at my cities, my capital city is up 10 production. It's up seven food. It's up 20 gold. It's up for faith. It's up not much culture and science, but it's up a little bit. If I go to like Seville, I remember Seville had like five culture. It had 14 food. It had 10 production. It had like 17 science, no faith, and like 19 gold. Just by virtue of placing down tile improvements, I have significant, I ha I'm not even finished with a lot of these cities. Some of these cities are still working on improved tiles, right? Like these are like quick and easy actions you can take to make your cities a lot better, like a lot better. Learn to love the builder. Please, 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 please learn to love the builder. Let's go ahead and settle a city right here. We'll go ahead and get those whales online. I thought he asked for 77 gold, not 77 gold per turn. Small error on my part. That's why I use quick deals because I, I never make that error with quick deals. Even the great and mighty potato is not infallible. Let's chop out a conquistador, improve a pasture. Look at that. Four food, two production, one thing and two pastures in the city is plus one housing so it can grow a little bit faster. So many benefits to improving your tiles. All right, we're going to place the harbor in here. It's a plus three harbor. It's nice. Coastal cities, they want a harbor. It's It really is that simple. This is, it's good to build a harbor in coastal cities. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and found a city right here. Boop, build bow is created. What is the purpose of this city? Well, its positioning is pretty far forward. It already has fresh water. So I, I think this might be like an encampment city. So I'll tell you what, I'll just, I'll buy this tile right here. And if I put that encampment there, I've effectively sort of declared this city will be a bulwark against Germany. I'm going to get started with a monument, of course, because that's like the sensible thing to do. But like, I could put missions on these tiles. Now they're two food, two production, with, and four faith. And that faith is awesome. It's so useful, but you didn't build any holy sites. So you have no way to make use of said faith which sucks. It sucks, dude. Because if you go theocracy, you could buy land combat units with faith and you get discounted faith purchases. It's crazy good. We will probably go reform church once we actually have a holy site. In fact, we could switch now. We could switch now and overwhelm the world with military because we're Spain and we're awesome. How many turns have I done here? Let me see. I've done about 20 turns. And I would say this empire is significantly better than the empire you gave me. It's not miles ahead. It doesn't blow it out of the water. It's just significantly better. Okay, we got the encampment over here in Valencia. Let's get started on the stable, I guess. What did you go for in your capital is the real question. Nice, you went for the stable in your capital. So we'll go for the barracks in Valencia. Hey, we can place another mission. And now we have another two food, two production tile. Remember, this is the cost to work the tile. This is the profit over here. This is These are great tiles now. Chop here to get this done a little bit quicker. We'll move in. Let's make sure we spend a bit of money on buying these tiles. Let's grab that monument because now that we can have a lot of population, we want to spread the borders, right? We got the granary, which lets us have population to work tiles. Now we want the monument to spread the borders of the city to get tiles for those people to work. It's like, that's the logical flow of things. Hills, in my opinion, are better off being mines than missions. But you can still, like if you want to put a mission on a mine, like this is still a great tile. This is fantastic. If you just want to carpet your, your you know, other continent possessions in missions, go right ahead, man. No one's going to stop you. Let's go ahead and settle this city right here. We'll delete this pin. Oh, this was on the wrong continent. Oh, well, that's fine. No biggie. Still, the city is going to be useful because it's going to get a granary. It's going to get a monument, probably in the other order. We can also get a harbor in here. It'll take a long time, but it will happen. And since you're playing on a relatively low difficulty, you could probably also justify a Petra in there. Let's pop into our government. We're going to drop discipline and instead plug in util contract to build units faster. And then I'll very quickly grab myself a crossbowman to support my war effort. All right, so we got the monument in Cadiz. Let's place the harbor, right? Lock the harbor in, then harvest, boom. And then harvest, boom. 
Harbour, literally instantly finished, and then we can harvest again. Boom, lighthouse. Single, in a single turn, we went from not having a harbour or a lighthouse to finishing both. That is the power of chopping. Chop, 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 chop. Please chop more. Please, please chop more. I want your name to be John Chopmore. That's what I want your reputation to be after you're done playing. Don't be afraid to buy tiles to improve. Remember, every tile you have that you have improved is just accelerating your entire empire. You are building the engine with which you, you win the game. We finished the harbour in Seville. It is worth it sometimes to buy the lighthouse, but we can just build it. Now we're going to place a farm triangle right here. Boom. We can even get another farm right there if we wanted to. But now Cadiz is like a really powerful city and it's only been around for a, like a minute or two and it's ready to get a shipyard. So I think you were going to go for a science victory. So I do think a campus in here makes probably the most sense. So I'll put the campus right there so it can benefit from well if i wait another couple turns and maybe sell some stuff don't be afraid to sell your resources off yeah i'll wait a couple turns on that one and instead just work on the shipyard sure it takes 26 turns but the city's growing it's going to work more tiles it's accelerating oh you don't get the gold from um shipyards in this version of the game that kind of sucks i'm going to put a trade route into cadiz because i want to get this shipyard sooner and so by putting a trader in that city i will get the thing that i want sooner all right so the harbor will take 37 turns the monument will take seven if i chop the harbor will take 34 turns so the overflow does go through so i wanted to point that out because some people believe the overflow does doesn't go through and so it's totally fine to chop through a building into another i think there is a kind of weird quirk where you don't want to do it twice on the same turn you kind of can in certain circumstances but you need to be careful but generally speaking if you're chopping one building out then overflowing into another it's fine so if we search by highest gold here you can see here we could trade with amsterdam for 20 gold or mogadishu for 17 if we search by highest food we could trade with madrid for five for three and five, but then we wouldn't quite get as much gold. But if we trade with Akaruna, we would get a similar amount. So like, I don't know what your trade situation is. It's fine, you're trading with Germany, but you can definitely optimize your trade routes a little bit better if you play around with this. And I think generally optimizing for gold is one of your best bets. Also getting envoys with city-states is super powerful. So now we're suzerain of Mogadishu right now and we get their benefit, which is traders are immune on water, but we're also making a lot more money. And this city is getting a nice boost to its production. Let's go ahead and steal money from the Aztecs feels good when you steal money. All right, I've got my conquistadors finished. I'm going to work on an armory because I want the combat experience. And next turn, I'll switch to faith purchasing. I'll get the armory in Valencia. The city is now growing nicely. It'll need more builders soon. In fact, it needs a new builder now because it's run out of workable, improvable tiles. So I'll go ahead and queue up a builder. Barcelona is looking fine. I might swap some of these tiles over. Go ahead and get me a monument and then a harbor. These cities, their goal is to build up their infrastructure and generate more resources. Let's go ahead and get to work on some Civil service because that gives us the better builder card. That way you can actually build builders faster. We got the monument in build bow. Let's go ahead and get that granary to continue growing. You get the monument to claim tiles and the granary to get workers to work the tile. Those are fundamental buildings that are important to the construction of a healthy economy in a city. All right, nice. There we have industrialization, which is going to give us a huge boost to our production. We also managed to find coal. In fact, the city of build bow is on coal, giving us instant access to coal, which is nice. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to change my government. I'm going to pay money to switch. Like I, I love of monarchy. Monarchy is awesome, but I'm going to switch to theocracy so that we can buy units. Meritocracy and serfdom are basically two mandatory cards if you ever need to build builders or if you built literally any districts. That's how you get culture. Retainers is mandatory in basically every game because it gives you amenities and amenities are one of the most powerful resources in the entire game. Not so for older games, but still kind of. Diplomatic League is incredibly powerful, potentially more powerful than Charismatic Leader if you spend your envoys carefully. Triangular Trade is really great as a civilization like Spain that typically has a lot of trade routes. Raid is fantastic if you plan to do a lot of pillaging and warfare. And since we're going to be faith purchasing our units, some sort of faith generation, like from Triangular Trade, is quite nice. The harbor adjacency is basically mandatory once you get shipyards. So we're kind of like we're, we're getting to a sort of not quite a late game position, I would say, but we're getting in the direction of a kind of late game. If we come in here, we could faith purchase units on a 15% discount, and that discount gets stronger every 15 turns, which is insane. And our units have a 17% experience boost, which is Again, insane. Like, to put this in perspective, a single one of these tiles generates four faith. A conquistador costs 250 production. To purchase a conquistador, it costs 500. You so two faith equals one production that you can spend anywhere on units. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. And we get a 15% discount. So it's even better than that. Oh, it's so good.
We're going to head towards military service so we can get access to the military academy, which will allow us to build corps and armies directly. We got the lighthouse in Seville. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves a trader. It'll take a little bit of time to build that, but that's fine. Now, Germany is so far ahead, I'm happy to stay friends with him. In my personal opinion, archaeological museums are better than art museums, so I'm going to go for the archaeological. Plus, we're pretty close to getting natural history anyway, and archaeological museums boost natural history, and this will get us plus two culture per turn, and potentially an extra little bit if once you put envoys into Nan Madal and Vilnius. I'm going to put a single en envoy into Vilnius, and a single envoy into Jerusalem, which will get doubled because I have the Diplomatic League card. And then I can swap that card out whenever I feel like it for the one that gets me more envoy points. Let's build a trader in Kostromskaya. We're about ready to declare the war. And we want Pokrovka. Unfortunately, our agent was captured trying to steal money, but that's okay. And we declare the war next turn. In a city like Mercia, look to grab whatever food you can nearby, okay? See these oases? They are like gold dust for the growth of the city. In fact, I would go as far as to say focus the city on food, not production. Because if that city can grow, you can start to make use of it. So we can declare a formal war, surprise war. I'm just going to declare a formal war. Boom. Then we, get a, do we, get, we do get a warmonger penalty, but no big deal. We can step forward into their city, look for pillages. We'll even faith purchase like I would love to faith purchase some horses But I have to do that back in this city because this is the city with the encampment The rules for like where you can purchase units were different in the older versions of Civ So we take a little bit of damage here. No big deal. We do have the all important stuff We're gonna pillage you're gonna pillage for health You're gonna step forward to here You're gonna hit the city because you want to break down the city's health and we'll keep reinforcing with conquistadors And we'll bring these horsemen forward. What is the purpose of the horsemen? The purpose of the horsemen is to pillage gather resources, turn all this war production into an advantage. Valencia, probably going to start needing more improved tiles. Well, I'll lay down some farms here. I got the archaeological museum in Madrid. Let's get to work on the workshop. We have the Gran Arena monument in Bilbao. We'll get to work on our encampment. This will help defend us against Germany, potentially. And Murcia is working two really nice food tiles, which is fantastic. We take a little bit of damage here. No biggie. Blast the city with our trebs. Remember, we don't need the trebs to survive. They just need to do their job. We prioritize pillaging gold because gold is incredibly powerful. I'll also pillage faith because that translates directly into units. We'll bring a new one of these forward. We'll scuttle forward with our horses as well. And don't forget, all these units can serve garrisons later. God, I love... I loved the OG game. You didn't have to accumulate strategic resources. It was so powerful that you could just spam them out every turn if you had the resources. It was so powerful. So let's just damage the city a little bit. You're standing on a tile that you can heal yourself. There's military science. We have access to cavalry now. Could attack here, but I'm just going to back you up to a nice safe location. No no reason to lose this unit. Although there already was a battering ram here that I could have made use here, which is probably not a bad idea. Yeah, let's smash Pokrovka. You're going to pillage for health. You're going to fortify for a turn because you're, you're guarding the siege tower, which means you should actually back up and then you should come in and take over for him. Sure, I'll research ballistics. I'll research rifling. I'll research it all. We got a trader in Seville. We want to trade for gold, but we also want to get pretty good production on that. Like, oh, look, Laventa, another city-state that we can get envoys for trading with. Amazing. I'll take that deal. Why don't you go ahead and build me that shipyard? This shipyard is worth eight production per turn. That's absurdly powerful. What are you doing in here? Well, you got a builder. Why don't you go ahead and build me that lighthouse? I'd probably be better off paying for the lighthouse in here. So I will do that. I will, I will pay for things in certain cities. Like in here, I'm tempted to buy a... A, an actual trader. I can upgrade to a cavalry if I like. All right, look at that. 62 combat strength. Super powerful. Upgrading units is way more cost effective than doing it another way. Get a scout, put it in your city. Scouts count for retainers. So you can pay 50 faith to get a to get an amenity in your city. That's like it's like the cheapest amenity you'll ever get your hands on. My horses are getting shot. They're tanking for the rest of my army. My trebuchets can now unleash. You can step forward a tile. You can step forward a tile. And we pillage, getting us like 300 faith. And then we just, we kill the city. Boom. This is now my city. I have the pyramids. It was that easy. It, like it took like a handful of turns and just this faith that was sitting there doing nothing. So like I could very, very quickly win pretty much whatever victory I want from this position. The hard part, right? The really, really hard part is like Germany is super far ahead. But here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to send this save file back to them. And here's what I'm going to tell them what to do. All you got to do is research research labs, then build them in every city. Make sure you, you, you get your get your campuses in every city. Research research labs, build the research labs. Build your spaceport in your capital. Doesn't matter where, just get it in here. At some point around the time that you're building your spaceport, move all of your traders to your capital and sort your, your trade routes by production and get as much 
production as you can in your capital. Then you got to launch the satellites, right? You got to launch the Earth satellite, you got to launch the moon landing, and then you got to launch the Mars hydroponics. Boom, boom, boom. It's that easy. You literally, at this point in the game now, here's, here's what my build order looks like. I click this, I hold down shift, I click this, I hold down shift, I click this, I hold down shift, and I click this. And I never look at the science screen ever again because I don't need to. I don't need to. I would maybe stop off at the seaport, okay? But maybe I would be like, hey, you know what? This is actually a pretty good building for my build. I'm going to grab the seaport and the power plant. And then I would go chemistry, rocketry, satellites, nanotechnology. Boom, boom, boom. That's it. Never have to look at that again. Build campuses in every city. Build your highest tech science building. Make sure you improve your tiles. Like this empire can win a, win a game now. It's just a matter of like getting the right buildings in place. Like we're going to build a factory. That's going to give production to all the nearby cities that are in range, which is I think three cities. That's nine production from a single building. That's insane. It's super powerful. In terms of government, make sure you go for, yeah, I believe it was democracy and you give them the really nice arsenal of democracy. Make people your allies. Use your spare gold to patronize the space race people. Bada bing, bada boom. You just finish the game. That's it. It's, it's very, very easy from here. Like I could probably finish this game in a couple hours. I may yet. I may yet. If there's a lot of popular demand and people really want me to finish this save file, if the video really pops off, I will finish it. Okay. Thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.